Hey, shalom and welcome to Vakar Makapash from Jimmy Islam, giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Chachwadash. When I give double honors unto the elders, the apostles of GMS, and shalom, I'm out there to the whole for where pushing his truth in all sincerity. Okay, back with another video. Um, you know, just on the topic of the, um, you know, these so called UFOs or these UAPs, you know, these, as they call you, uh, was it, uh, unidentified flying objects and uh, unidentified aerial phenomena, right? Which um you know Esau having uh, issues with right now, <laughs> you know Esau's had the world distracted by flying balloons and all that kind of stuff and all the speculation around it, you know while he's taking you you know your mind out of the game, so you're not really concentrating on things that are going on around about the place, you know. So we got <laughs> we got uh, uh, earthquakes in the world, right? We got uh, train. Chemical train bombs going off and all kinds of things, man. But he's still got people distracted right now with with <coughs> some 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 madness, right? But you know, we know the uh, the chariots are out there, the chariots of the Lord are out there, you know, causing trouble with Esau, right? And and that's why Esau got, you know, um, you know, he got space force, he got all, he got NORAD looking for, you know, all these types of things here, right? Now we're not saying that every time, uh, you know, these um, UFOs, these unidentifiable, unidentifiable flying objects, is um, is caught. We're not saying that they're all chariots of the Lord, um, but we know they'd be out there, man. And that's what Esau's really concerned about. All right, and he's talking about you know shooting them down and and, and you know. If Esau shoots down anything, it ain't gonna be a chariot. It ain't gonna be a chariot of the Lord. It ain't gonna be an angel. All right, that's that's for sure. All right, but Esau is is is, is scared to death that you know Yahushai is about to come soon with with his army. You know, but he's thinking at the same time he got technology that can can you know go toe to toe with with the angels and the chariots, man, which is delusional. You know, but um, you know, I just wanted to bring this out. This is from the Smithsonian Magazine. There's more than 350 new UFO sightings added to U.S. government records, and like I said, they ain't gonna all uh, all gonna be um, uh, chariots. You know, all right? Some of them have reasonable explanation. And this is why, you know, you know, us older boys, man, we might not react every time we see sight in the sky. You know what I mean? You know, you have to diligently, uh, you know, look upon it, man. Because not everything that we see in the sky is is going to be a chariot. You know, I know sometimes the younger brothers get get excited every time they see something, but you know, you got to, you know, just understand that, right? I mean, not everything in the sky is a chariot, but um, you know, like I said, they are out here, okay, causing uh, havoc with Esau. Right, and the rest of the world. Okay, so um yeah, it's got here the United States government has logged more than 350 new reports of UFOs or as officials call them identified unidentified aerial phenomena since March 2021. Uh, according to a report from the Office of Director of National Intelligence Odney last uh, released last week. All right, so obviously this is an article. Well, she wrote this in 2023. January 18th But um The report is I guess from 2001 Or since 2001 Alright so there's 350 since 2001 Right so Of the 366 new UAP records More than half were listed as having Unremarkable characteristics And this is what we will watch out for You know we know we, You know for sure if it's a chat moment It's doing you know, crazy things, man. You know, when you've seen chariots that, you know, uh, can increase and decrease its size and, and just disappear and, and you know, move, a, you know, uh, physics divide, uh, defying angles and stuff like that, then you know you can at a chariot for sure. You know what I'm saying? But other stuff that's just, you know, sort of just sitting around, you know, whatever, you know, it could be something else, you know. 
It says that of the 366 new UAP records, more than half were listed as having unremarkable characteristics, with 163 characterized as balloon or balloon like entities. The other unremarkable sightings were characterized as drones or drone like objects or, attri or attributed to clutter like airborne plastic bags, weather events, or birds. Okay, which they could be, right? They could be, but you know. So, ho however, 171 of the UAP reports remain uncharacterized and have demonstrated unusual flight characteristics or performance capabilities and require further analysis. These ones got them spooked. <laughs> These are the ones that got them spooked. All right. This is contrary to some what to, contrary to what some believe or may believe. Tracking UAPs is not all about finding aliens, all right? And this is what they that's what they're trying to make it out to be, right? That that they you know there's extraterrestrial forms of life, okay, which, you know, they are. Well, they're not from Earth, so not really. Because terrestrial means Earth, right? These are, these are angelic beings. You know? Um, but they're not, what you know, as I say in the movies, they try to put make it out to be aliens from other planets and stuff like that. But really, they're, you know, they're, they're the angels of the Lord, all right? So you're right, it's not about finding aliens, right? It says, unknown objects in American airspace could pose national security or safety uh, risks, perhaps as foreign uh, surveillance attempts or as hazard, hazard to airplanes. All right. uh, last summer, all, the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office was created under the Department of Defense to aid in the studies of UAPs and the office coordinated with, with the ODNI for the new report. All right, so they, got, they opened a new um, offices to kind of deal with these things. I said Trump, you know, when he was in power, uh, announced the uh, the space force and whatever. All right. By the end of the day, you're not going to have to protect yourself from uh, from the from the chariots, man. <laughs> Pardon me, right? So between 2004 and 2021, the Odney recorded 144 spiritual number, right? UAP reports according to preliminary assessment released in June 2021. Since that time, the office has received 247 new UAP reports and added 119 recently unearthed past events that were not initially included in the 2001 assessment. This brings the total to 510 UAP, UAP reports as of August 2022. All right. So most of the new additions to that list stem from sightings by U.S. Navy and Air Force pilots. Okay, so from what you would call more credible sources, you know. It's, it's, it's things that they've witnessed. Some of them didn't want to say nothing because, you know, might make them sound crazy or whatever, you know. But they've seen, th they saw things, man. They've seen things, okay, that spooked the hell out of them. All right. It says, um, who observed UAPs while performing operational tasks, the investigators uh, attribute the upticks of reports to a greater knowledge of the potential threats UAPs present as well as reduced stigma surrounding UAP reporting. According to, to a new report. Okay, so they ain't being labelled as mad anymore because people are starting to take this man a little bit more seriously. You know, but like I said to the public, they they they're gonna pay it like oh it could be alien life forms from another planet and, and all this stuff that they're not gonna tell you the truth of what these things really are, you know, if they know it all. You know, or these certain man won't know what it is that they're looking at. Okay, but you know, the elites and you know, certain men obviously they're gonna know what that really is, and they, like I said, they they they're hella scared of it, man, because they they got nothing, they got no answers for those um, so-called UAPs. They haven't got any answers to them. Okay, they try and catch them, they try to you know try and shoot them down and whatever, but unsuccessful, man. Okay, but they would like you like you to believe in in Roswell and Area, was it Area Fifty One and all that kind of business, like. Like he's so capable of of capturing an, <laughs> an another life form, an angel or whatever, an alien or whatever, right? And he's doing all kinds of old top seas and getting all kinds of technologies from the ship and that. But you, the US is military is damn bad. <laughs> you know? It's damn bad, man. But um you know, they they ain't come up with nothing great. You know? But yeah. All right, let's move from here then. 
Uh, yeah, pretty much right. So, let's grab some scriptures, man. Uh, it's from Luke 21, verse 11. It says, And great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, right? We had this massive earthquake, or well, still going on, right? <laughs> in the in Turkey, Syria, um, with over 35,000 people dead. So the Lord is letting loose uh, judgment in different places in the earth, like I said, in diverse places, okay, with earthquakes. Whether you saw behind it or not behind it, you know, with harp or whatever, man, the Most High is still the one that unleashing hell on the, on the earth, man. Right to bring judgment, right? It says the famines and pestilences. Uh, you know, uh, there was a bro was posted up in the chat today. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember the name of it now. In my mind, I was gonna call it Mars Bar, <laughs> Mars Bar virus, but I think it's like Mar, Mar, not Mar something, right? They were talking about recently, but um, you know, they're always talking about pestilences and, and, and new diseases that are gonna gonna attack the world at some point. You know, so that's the most high doing his thing. You know, got these pestilence out there, man, and yeah, you don't you don't know what's gonna be the next big one. Because yeah, it seems like now nah, we're in a we're in a in a in a, a mindset now they're always waiting for the next big uh uh you know virus or whatever now to, to disrupt the world. You know, that you're gonna have to <laughs> give up freedoms to, to, to fight, you know. So they you know they're preparing it, man. He's still prepare, preparing to use that situation, okay. So, so famines and pestilences, the famines is is, is a, a growing issue, right? The cost of food, the, the availability of food, okay, that's all a growing problem, right? It says, and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven, right? And and these chariots are part of those sights, part of those fearful and terrible sights in the heavens, in the skies. Okay, they're, they're, they're being seen more and more. Okay, and they're always around disasters and things like that, man, because the angels are busy, <laughs> you know, doing what they're supposed to be doing, fulfilling the, the will of the Heavenly Father, right? And they're being cited more and more and more, and people are asking more and more questions about it. People are speaking about it more than they ever have done. And now they've been taken more seriously now. It's not just something that, oh, you know, the conspiracy nuts, they, they believe in alien aircrafts or whatever. These these crafts, they exist. Right, yeah, there may not be, there might not be aliens in them, <laughs> you know, bulbous, green-headed men, but um, the crafts do exist, and, and like, like we said, you know, us men at GMS, like we know what they are. Okay, we know what's inside them. Okay, and it ain't little green men or whatever, man. Predators and aliens or whatever, it ain't that. Okay, they're the angels of the Lord of the Lord in those crafts. Okay, the chariots. Right, and that's why they're able to do things that are not able to be done on the earth. Right? But they have power beyond that. Okay, it's why they can turn at right angles. That's why they can, you know, just disappear and reappear, travel faster than light and all kinds of things. You know, submerge themselves in the water and come out. You know. Why they can be massive, why they can, you know. Pass through the surface of the sun and all kinds of things, man. Esau can't do none of that stuff. That's why Esau has no hope in hell of defeating such a thing, you know. And, and plus, these these bodies they don't take damage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying they don't take damage. Okay, you're not gonna hurt them, you know. So yeah, Esau has no no chance in hell in you know in defeating them. All right. Like, like the Apostle Ramla was saying, man, is is a delusion, right? It's, it's it's crazy to think that they believe they can find some way to overcome them, because he saw proud and he think he got he think he got power. He thinks he got destructive power, but he's gonna find that, you know, it's what like Apocalypse told. Who did he tell that man? It's in the X Men movie, man. When he told it, oh no, no, it might have been in the cartoon series actually. Um. It must be talking to one of the some of the mutants or whatever, man. But he was telling them that you Babylonians, uh, no, you're no closer to, to defeating me than the Babylonians with their with their uh, sticks and fire or some some craziness like that, man. That you're still on a base level, man. You you, you ain't got the the power to deal with me. Okay, you're no closer to 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 meet to defeating me than the Babylonians were with their sticks and firewood or whatever it was that he said. <laughs> some mad statement. 
you know, and that's what Esau is, even though he got nuclear weapons, he got lasers, he got all kinds of gadgets and gizmos, right? He ain't nowhere on the level to, to fight with gods. And that is that is what Esau's gonna find out at the end of the days. Okay, that he just the man. Okay, and not God, as the scriptures say. Alright. So yeah, all these things that in in the in the heavens that you know these UAPs, UFOs, whatever, right? They're all parts of the of the fearful signs in the in the heavens, man. Alright? It's Jeremiah 10 verse 2. So thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them, right? These these like I said, the elites know what's going on, right? But the, the average person don't have a clue, man. Like I said, they got you still got the, the mass thinking that these are aliens and all that kind of stuff, right? Independence Day level or whatever, right? And, you know, like I said, they're, they're dismayed at the signs that they're seeing, man. They have no clue what it is they're saying. They're, they're, some of them are afraid, some of them are excited. I, I, I'm going to show you before you got some worshipping. Well, <laughs> we know there's, there's there's cultures out there that all, all, are all into, or the aliens built the pyramids and all this kind of madness, right? Planet Nibiru and, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Greys and whatever. But, um, so you've got people that sit there and worship these types of things. Thinking that that's what these things are, man. But they're, they're, they're delusional too. You know, they're dismayed at the signs of the, of the heaven, man. Okay, but these things are, are referenced in the scriptures, man. They're made known and and even um, have been rec recorded by, you know, certain men in history of their encounters of these things and, and paintings and artwork, you know, concerning these things. You know, Apostle Ramnod mentioned this, this, this picture and I remember this picture. Um, where it shows like a you know, a man inside a, a spaceship, quote unquote, you know, in the sky, okay, which represents an angel, okay, moving around in in the in the, in the spiritual vehicle, the chariot, right? They they made paintings of those things. They had they had certain understanding of those things, right? So yeah, they exist, man. But it's just not what Esau is pushing out there to you. You know, they didn't come from another galaxy. They come from another dimension, but not from another galaxy or, or, or whatever, man. ET and all that business. You know? So, yeah, when you when, <laughs> when them man talk about a weather balloon, man, I'm getting shook, man. don't even know what to do about it. Oh, it's a, it's a balloon. Oh, it's China. It's, it's, <laughs> is it Chinese? Is it this? Is it that? Oh, yeah. And now they're shooting down other things, apparently, and then, like, no one knows what the hell they are because it ain't... You know, being tight lipped about it, ain't talking about it. You know, it it, it garners up speculation, man. You know, and again, Apostle Rambler, I think it was as mentioning Project Blue Beam, Beam and stuff like that, because they could be using that kind of stuff too. You know, to have the people in a bit of a frenzy, you know. This is Zechariah chapter 5, verse 3. It says, Then said he unto me, This is the curse. There we go up, actually. Uh, Zechariah 1 and 5 Sorry 5 and 1 So then I turned and lifted up my eyes And looked and behold a flying roll Okay this is re representative of, of a chariot Right This is how uh, Zechariah is describing it right And he said unto me what seest thou And I answered I see a flying roll The length thereof is 20 cubits And the breadth thereof 10 cubits Okay which is not a particularly big one Big chariot but Chariot nonetheless right <laughs> So then said he unto me, this is the curse. So these things are, are, are a curse upon the earth. Okay, when you see these things, like for, for the earth in general, not not for the Lord's elect. For the Lord's elect, these mean these things mean something completely different. Okay, they're, they're part of our salvation. They're part of our hope, right? Things that are going to deliver us from the destruction. But on the earth, to these people in general, okay, it's a bad sign. Okay, is a bad sign. So you should, you have every, you know, you should be afraid. Okay, you should be, you will be afraid when they turn up. Especially with the, when the hosts of heaven turn up, man, you're going to be afraid. Right, because, you know, you're going to, you know, it ain't going to just be, you know, them darting around the earth, man. They're going to be here for war, to fight. And you're going to feel the, their presence and their intention, their energy. You're going to feel it all, man. Okay, it ain't going to feel nice. All right, so this is the curse that go forth over the face of the whole earth, right? That's why you see ch chariot sightings everywhere, you know, different parts of the earth, right? For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off as on this side, according to it, and everyone that sweareth shall be cut off 
as on that side according to it, right? It says, I, I, I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief and into the house of him that swear falsely by my name, and it shall remain in the midst of his house and shall consume it with, tim with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. All right, so these, these, these um, angels, man, these chariots, man, they're here to bring down this kingdom. To bring, to bring down Esau's kingdom who have stolen and murdered, right, for his position on the earth. Right, going around acting like he's uh, righteous and he's, he's God's people, you know. But when he's just read the devil, you know. So these angels are here to bring down this kingdom. All right, and they're going to return when Yahweh Shai returns. They're going to return with Yahweh Shai. Okay, so they yeah, they don't mean anything good to the average person, you know. Is it Revelation chapter nineteen verse fourteen? Uh, let me read up as well. Um, verse eleven, and I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And this white horse represents Yahweh Shai, right? And in Russian, he doth judge and make war. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had, he had a name written that no man knew but he himself, right? And when Yahweh Shai comes, he's going he's gonna to come in a, a massive chariot. Okay, mahusiv, right? To the point where you can't see beyond it. Okay, he's going to cover, you know, your, your the, the skyline. Okay? So, and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his his name is called the word of God and the armies right because Yahweh is coming with an army were in heaven followed a, a, followed him upon white horses okay that's their chariots right their white horses right clothed in fine linen white and clean and out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword that it should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the almighty God and he had on his vesture and, and on his fire a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Right, so Yahweh is going to turn up with the angels in the chariots. And they're going to go forth from the earth and start blazing shit, man. Okay, start blazing shit and chaining people up. Right, so you're going to see more sightings. Okay, and, 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 and in near time, you're going to see a whole bunch of them form together. You know, ready to invade the earth, man. Okay, but again, it's not no alien invasion like Esau would like to make it seem. Okay, this is God, his son, and, and the angels, man. Some divine war going on. Okay, for, for the sinners of the earth, for the wicked of the earth. This is Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Yahweh Shai shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Right? I said the Lord's coming with his mighty angels to fight, to, to war. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and they and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Yahweh Shai, who shall be punished with an everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. All right? And this is from 2nd Ezra chapter 13. I'm going to read from verse 3. Says, and I beheld and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. Okay, again, the armies, okay, the chariots, the UFOs, what UAPs, whatever you want to call them. Okay, they're all going to be there. Right? And when he when he turned his countenance to look, all the things trembled that were seen under him. Okay, the fear is going to come upon the people, man. All right. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fadeth when it feedeth the fire. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea, right? So just like the, you know, like they put in the movies Independence Day, right? The world is going to set aside their differences, man, to come and confront the invaders, i.e. Yahweh Shai and the angels. That came from the sky. That's where they get the ideas for the you know for these movies, man. It's in the scriptures. 
Just that it ain't, you know, like I said, bulbous aliens or, or whatever, man. Okay, they're angels, man. They are going to fight Yahweh Shai and the angels. That's what their plan is, to fight God. Because they're the devil, man. Only a fool would think to do such a thing. Or would have the audacity to do such a thing. Right? Their pompous pride have gotten the better of them, man. And again, that's all they're doing of the Heavenly Father, man, to put that pride in them. To, make, to have them believe that they could do such a thing. Just so the Lord can destroy them in front of the whole world. All the world's armies are going to fall. All the world's nations are going to fall. To Yahweh Shai and the angels, man. All right. It says that, but I beheld, and lo, he graved, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Yahweh Shai is flying in a, in a massive chariot, man. All right. And I would have seen the region or place whereat the hill was graven, and I could not, because that's how big it was. Okay, you couldn't see past it, right? And after this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight, right? So even though they were quaking in their boots, right? The most I still put the spirit upon them, man, to, to be hard-headed, <laughs> right? To go out there and fight anyway. The most is going to harden their hearts, harden their minds, you know? And that, that that and that just goes to show all this talk about you know American God's army and that man they got no problem or they will have no problem fighting the Lord when He came because they'd be under orders, man. And they're about they they're realizing that the whole world is about to change right now, right? And 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 these people are wicked, man. These people in, in the world are wicked, right? So they're gonna try and defend the world that they they got, you know, from all threats and any threats, even though. They, even though the fools can't see in front of them, man, that this is the son of God and you're about to be destroyed, man. But like I said, the most are gonna put that spirit upon him anyhow, just, just to come and get destroyed. Right? To be to be made an example before the eyes of all the nations, man. Their mighty men are gonna be destroyed. So what what are the rest of the people gonna be able to do? Nothing, man. You you you're at pure mercy. And the way that these mighty men are gonna be destroyed, man, it's gonna be flawless. Flawless victory without effort. They're going to be defeated without effort. Okay, which it goes on to speak about, right? So then, lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up hand nor held sword nor any instrument of war. No effort. <laughs> it ain't going to be an effort. Okay, they're going to get wiped out in a blink. And like I said, the whole world is going to witness that, man. And and they're going to know that this is God. You know, this is the Son of God right now. Okay, and, it, and besides Him, there is no other God. Okay, and we're all going to praise Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai in that day, man. And the whole world is going to know who the true power is. Okay, the, the Lord's name is going to be magnified in that day. All right? So, but I only, but only I saw that He sent out of His mouth as it had been a blast of fire. And out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, and they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and a great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. Was prepared to fight, but did not fight, man. They didn't get a chance to fight. <laughs> they just got wiped out. Right? And burned them up every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived. All right? But only dust and smell of smoke. You're going to get vaporized, man. Right? So when I saw this, I was afraid. Because of the, the violence of the Lord, man. The Lord coming with great wrath. Right? And the Lord just one time wiped them all out. Right? So you you, <laughs> you, you people, civilians, right? <coughs> you ain't going to do a damn thing, man. You're going to get chained up. Put to death or chained up. Okay, you're going to accept the new regime, man. You're going to accept the power and the authority of, of, of Yahweh Shai. Okay, you're going to have to. It's good to say uh, he, he would, uh, would not have me uh, rule over them and should be come bring him hither and slay them before me. That's what's, that's what's going to happen, man. You know? But the chariots, these angels, they mean business, man. Right? And like I said, you know, all these sightings and, and all this speculation, all these things flying in the, in the sky, man. Don't worry. In time, you're going to see 
what's real and what's not real. Right? When the, when these chariots come down and start blasting everything, man, you're gonna know it. <laughs> you're gonna know, right? But just know that you know these are the, the these authentic ones, man. They're not here to help nobody. Well, not here to help you. They're here to help the elect because they're gonna play their part in, in delivering the elect. Uh, you know, from the from the places that they have been scattered in, right? To bring them to Yahweh Shai in the sky, right? So, you know, they're gonna play their part in that. But for the rest of the people and, and the rest of Israel, right? The Israelites, they're gonna be destroyed, man. All right. So yeah, this is the curse that go up upon the of the whole earth. All right. So you know, with that, I'm gonna say shalom. Lord, when this is edifying, and I'll catch you, brothers and sisters, on the next one. So, until next time, I say shalom.